It's space weather! Looking at the sun on 171 angstroms. Sunspot 2732 is on its way to setting. Active region still rising on the east. And another new one showing up around this area. See that come into existence. And also some instability in this area. Let that play through. Take a look at your local yellow dwarf and 304 angstroms. And here we are in 94 angstroms. For those of you who missed it yesterday, small x-ray flare came out of this active region, which you just saw explode right there. We'll let that play through again. By the way, that shaking motion is caused by the SDO's calibration maneuver to ensure that it's pointing directly at the center of the solar disk. Here comes that x-ray flare right there. And while we're here, let's zoom in on Sunspot 2732. A little bit of activity coming out of it. Nothing major. Here are the magnetic lines in 1700 angstroms. Totally connected to this coronal hole, magnetically speaking. And here's your magnetogram, sunspot 2732, active region, head to spaceweathernews.com. So no x-ray flares since we did yesterday afternoon's video. Now we see a major increase in the BT and a majorly negative BZ right there. See that? That is an earthquake risk. High amount of magnetic power coming out at a very low Z angle associated with the solar south pole. And also you can see this ongoing coronal hole magnetic connection here which is spouting an uptick in earthquakes and volcanoes. Solar wind density is actually a little higher than it was yesterday. It looks like about 8 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed looks like it's flatlined out now, perhaps reaching its bottom around 300. We are expecting an increase in this today. And if that's the only density increase we see, I'll be surprised because there is a corona hole wind stream expected to arrive tonight. KP index is up to 1. And you can see the magnetometer has reached its low. And so we'll be looking at that throughout the day. Signets forecast. Electron flux in sort of a normal operating range there. Slim to no charging hazards. And the F2 layer is looking pretty normal as it's looked around this time of day for the past several weeks. Head to quakes.globalincidentmap.com. We do see a slight uptick in earthquakes. And with that negative BZ angle we just looked at, Everybody in an earthquake-prone area needs to be on alert. 
So 12 hours ago, Russia got a 5.3 at 80.7 kilometers. Alaska gets a 3.6. Pretty average for Alaska at this point, as Alaska's been rocking for about a month and a half now. Indonesia gets a 4.8. Peru a 4.9. Russia, a 5.4, Taiwan, a 4.3. And then a whole series of earthquakes all around the same time in Alaska, California, Nevada. Alaska and the British Virgin Islands. Guatemala, that's only one quake. 4.0. Another 4.1 in Alaska. Looks like the biggest quake of the past 12 hours was in Indonesia, 5.6. Show you where it's located on the map. Also got a 4.4 in Russia. So uptick in earthquakes and continued uptick increase forecasted. Here's the volcano situation, and the, the volcano situation is ongoing with a lot of eruptions. First of all, Shivaluch emitting another 18,000 foot plume and a 25,000 foot plume. Krakatau emitting another 25,000 foot plume. Ducono, 7,000 foot plume. Pobo cut the pedal, volcanic ash advisory. Sabancaya from Peru, another 27,000 foot plume down there. Many of these are high enough to reach into the stratosphere. And Planchon Petroa in central Chile, a 17,000 foot plume. That is an uptick in, an uptick in volcanoes, folks. And there's the map from late yesterday. Moving on. Look at the GOES X-ray imager. Those of you who missed yesterday's video, you see a B-class X-ray flare coming out of the rising active region on the east. We'll let that play through once. Here it comes. Emitting a small B-class flare despite not even facing the Earth yet. We'll be keeping an eye on that. And according to this prediction, we're going to get a glancing blow first from the incoming coronal hole wind stream, followed by a very minor uptick. There's your Enlil prediction. Take a quick look at the geospace magnetosphere movies here. We'll look at the pressure, much higher than it was yesterday and the day before. An expected reflection of the slightly increased solar wind density. And you can see it reflected there at the end of the movie. I'll let it play through once more. Be a little density spike right there toward the end. Here's North American magnetic perturbations. Significant perturbations there, actually. Not super high in intensity. Let's look at it over the globe.
Got a little bit spilling out of the Antarctican area into the oceans. And here's the view from the poles, which will probably look more normal. Let that play through. And consider that data gathered. U.S. Doppler radar map from AccuWeather.com. Let that play through so you understand what's going on in the United States weather situation. Giving you an early look. Now a quick look at the NASA GOES water vapor map. We've got a convergence zone right in this area. That should help give you an idea of when it's going to rain or when it's going to stop. Next, let's look at tropical tidbits. Just to look at the global jet stream real quick. So here's, this is uh, January 1st until the present. Just to show you an idea of what the jet stream has been doing. can see some some north south jet stream motion in this area double jet streams down here and a pretty serious breakdown over here let that play through so you see the forecast And that is through Sunday. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, subscribing, commenting, etc. We appreciate the burgeoning interest in space weather, as the sun is the progenitor for all the Earth's weather. This gives us a great view of this triangular coronal hole that's rotating through. And we're about to receive some wind stream from it. Thanks again for watching. Remember, when you're way to a coronal hole windstream, don't drink. And if you drink, don't drive.